Welcome to the Redmen TV on Centre Match Build-Up Show, Liverpool, Dortmund, Europa League. Paul, Chris, John, go. Um, this is the biggest game Liverpool have had since... Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's obviously Manchester United. Manchester United, it? the but, other in the last But the round. thing is, this is why I was... I don't know whether it's a bigger game for me. Now, obviously, it's a, another stage in the competition, so naturally you would say, oh, yeah, but Manchester United, you're first time. Uh, on a personal level, and I'm not saying I'm right, on a personal level, the Man United game was bigger for me. Yeah. OK. Dad? Well, Dortmund are a better team. Um, one of the best teams in Europe. Should really be in the Champions League. They just had a bit of a bad year last year, didn't they? Yeah. Um, definitely one of the top six teams in Europe, I would have thought. So we're playing the best. Whereas the Man United game was just us playing Man United, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> I get true. that, but it's like you could say that about all oh, the derby shouldn't be fucking a big yeah. game because it's just. Well, it's Everton, a big game, but, it, but it, it was a big game. But this is a big European night, and the biggest since Madrid, I suppose. Yeah. No, I, I, this is this is I think I think you're right. I think that yeah, it is the biggest game since the last round of the Europa League where we happened to play in a massive tie against our you know arguably our biggest rivals etc. But for me, you know, this is this is what it's more about because like Man United is Man United and it is whether you play it in Europe or not, it is Liverpool versus Man United. See, I, it's, it's I get same. it. If we'd been playing Sparta Prague say in the last round, this would clearly be a much more massive game than yeah. that one. That was a big because it was Man United, not not any other reason, not because it was the well, last yeah. thirty two or whatever it was. It yeah. was That's what I think the the European thing was okay, yeah, it was the, it was a European game, but it and the fact that it was it was not a particularly important round of the competition as such, but this for me is 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 we, the, the atmosphere was good against United, but I genuinely think that the second leg of this when we get, you know, when we get back to Anfield, this is the potential to be another one of those great Liverpool European that, yeah, and that style. Yeah, yeah, you know, more like I think more like Chelsea and that. You know what I mean? Those games that it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna matter so much because, and maybe it would have been like we hope. I, well, hopefully, God, yeah, absolutely. If I think if the if the legs maybe have been flipped for the United game, we might have actually we yeah. might have seen that a bit more in the second leg. Like, but I, this is this is what it's all about. Playing big teams on the European stage, and I know it's not the Champions League, but and tapping their players up and absolutely, yeah, showing them what it's all about. Um, but yeah, no, I think this is this game's absolutely massive, and it, it, it harks back to the big Champions League games I think of the past. Because as I say, if Liverpool are able to, to to best Dortmund over two legs, this has the potential to be one of those ties that we talk so about. So we're not going, mate. It's just absolutely got to like. Yeah, I know. Um, Chris, you got a trivia question? For I do. Week? We've played Dortmund three times in official games, once in the European Cup Winners' Cup Final of 1966. Losing 2-1. Who was the goal scorer for Liverpool, John? Roger Hunt. Amazing. And twice in the Champions League of 0102, winning 2-0. Goal scorers, John? No idea. Uh, Paul? You sorry? Goal scorers with 2-0. When we what? When we beat them 2-0 in the Champions League in 01. Um, Gerard yeah, and... No. no. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright, correct them on no. Ye and Vladi Schmidtje. Yeah. Amazing, it's like you knew the answer. Yeah. And drawing nil nil in Germany because we were looking at the same page on Google. And there have been four players who plied their trade for both clubs. Can you name the four double agents? And for one bonus point, one player played in both games in 2001 and is still playing in the Premier League now. So, who is it? Just to clarify that, yeah, four, four players who played for both, both clubs. One player who played in 0102 for Dortmund and is still playing in the Premier League now. OK, cool. Let us know that in the comments below and we'll give you the answer at the end of the show, so stay tuned. Um, Dad, Origi or Sturridge for this game? Sturridge? Yeah? Yeah. No doubt? Absolutely not. OK, that's an interesting one because we obviously did a... I think if the question was Firmino or Sturridge, then I might be less certain. Would you go... OK, then let's change the question. OK, yeah, yeah. yeah. Firmino, I like where this is going. Firmino, Firmino. Firmino. OK, interesting. Chris, well, would you play Firmino as the false nine, then? Mm -hmm. Is that what your ideal scenario would be? For this game, yeah. That's interesting. Do you want to do a start 11 show afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> but you put it on the line. Um, so, yeah, all that love you get in the comments before I like, pretty quickly just start Player 11. ratings and start 11 predictions. Brutal. Um... Go back to the original question then, because obviously we did. We the discussion we had on the final wave post Spurs was 
in a nutshell, Sturridge carries a fear factor and he has the ability to take a, 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 something out of nothing and score you the goal. Divock Origi doesn't necessarily have that, um, at least less guaranteedly so, but physically he suits the lone striker all better. So for you, what is more important if you had to choose between those two on the ninth? It would depend weirdly on Roberto Firmino. I think if Firmino's in the side and you've got like Adam Alana, Firmino, Coutinho behind, I'd probably go with Origi. But I think without the without Firmino, I think I'd probably go with Sturridge. This based on I think a point Aubrey made yeah. about having players of you know your you, you match winners I guess in in the team. Yeah. That without Firmino, you, you can't you can't have it just be. If it's Milner, Alana, and then and then you've got Coutinho. And Origi, there's like three or four players who aren't really getting loads of goals. Whereas point. if Firmino's in there as well. I just think Firmino offers a lot. I think, you know, he's got tremendous pace. And I know we talked on the on the final word show a lot about Sturridge having a fear factor. As soon as a game kicks off and Origi runs past you, they, they automatically get a little bit scared of him because he's fast as fuck. Like. Yeah, no, that's right. Um, I, think, I think he just, I think for the way that I would set Liverpool up, Origi would be a better fit for that. Mm -hmm against Dortmund what about yourself no I, I, I actually agree with that to, to some extent but I think we, I think you make an interesting point there that the Firmino thing I'd have Firmino over all, over all of them if I'm perfectly See, honest I mean he's, he's recently played in Germany and then that you could argue well Dortmund know him so the, but he was he was very very good in, in Germany <laughs> yeah. you know and therefore they'd be scared of him more than they'd be scared of Sturridge mm. you know potentially so. I, yeah, I know I, the last time Hoffenheim played them I think it was was it three one? I think Dortmund beat them the last time or something. Like they, they fucking murdered them last season. I remember mm. that. Like, um, yeah. So I, I, obviously, that is not your thoughts on that. Who, who would you go with in those situations? And I, I agree. I like. I'd like to see us go back to what we did against City away, what we did against Chelsea away as well. Go go back to more like that. But that being said. It's great that we've got the options, yeah. you know, and hopefully we've got the options because we don't know if Firmino's going to be fit. He was touching over the weekend. You'd like to think he'd be back in contention, but having someone like a Sturridge on the on the bench could be a, a good option because ultimately we do need to nick a goal. You know, a goal would make a massive difference. Particularly if, you, if you're trying to hit them on the break late in the game, I would want to have people with pace like Origi ready to come on, mm -hmm. and I maybe, you know, who, who could actually have a go at them late in the game. Yeah, that's an interesting one. One thing that's not going to settle the nerves in any way, shape or form is a tweet put out the weekend. Uh, Bruce Dortmund in 2016, won 14, drawn two, lost none. Um, Why did you have to tell everyone? Yeah, well, look, we've, got to, get, crying. we've got to get it out there. Um, Chris, tactic-wise, toe-to-toe or park the bus? I'd be getting the big 18-wheeler, me, like that, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> just get parking the, up, like... Get the handbrake on. That's what I'd be doing. Yeah. And I'd be just lo looking... To get something on the break and get a goal, like, and I think one all would be a fucking brilliant result for me. Yeah, I think I, you know, it's daft. You wouldn't want to put yourself in a position where you need two goals at all against Dortmund, but even as bad as losing three one, you know, having an away goal could make it makes all the difference. I mean, for me, two one defeat would be fine. Yeah, you know, I think I'd be happy with that. I'd be even happier with three two defeat. Mm. You know, because I, I mean, and by that you might guess that I'd rather us have a go. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think we have to get a goal at least yeah. uh, one, uh, and I think we do that by playing like we did at City and at Chelsea. And uh, you know. yeah, I, I think this is, I, I part of me says good old Rafa esque European performance. Go and be tight, be compact. Yeah, look to hit, look to hit on the break. And in that instance, I think that would favour Origi. If I'm perfectly honest, you know, stick him, stick him on a lone when, when, footer up front. When have we been tight and compact? Well, exactly. There's that, but equally, part of me also thinks. Fuck it, because I'm so you know it's not go our strength. Swinging. Well, no, but not even go down. Go out, go 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 in, go out, go there, smash him. <laughs> Why not? You know, everyone's expecting us to get to to get beat, and everyone looks what, so what they did to albeit a weakened Spurs side. That they're phenomenal, they're in great form. But you know what? We're actually not in that bad form, generally speaking. In this oh, year, we started Spurs to score a few goals. Yeah, that game, didn't true. They? But what I what I want to hark back to is, is that we, there are so many similarities between the 2004-05 season and this one. I want to see us turn up like think think. Let's channel Leverkusen, and let's go. You know, my God, why not? You know, and don't, the, the odds will be stacked against us. We're the underdogs in this, but go and get a result. You know, I I, I back back ourselves because I think if we if we you write that I think if we if we do, I think we 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 have the tendency to back ourselves into a corner and if we try to go defensive because they have the ability to to score goals against anyone. 
they want to. And if we start defensively and they score, then having to ramp ourselves back up to go for it, I don't know. Maybe go. I think maybe go there, get a, give them a bloody nose, and then hang on for dear life. Could be a could be an interesting way to do it. I don't know. Interesting to people's thoughts on the on the on the approach in the comments below. Um, let's get some man of the match predictions or who do we feel is going to be important uh, for for Liverpool in particular in this game, Dan. The obvious one, obviously, is going to be Coutinho, but I'm going to say Firmino. OK, cool. Chris? I think bouncing back after the game, our last game, Emre Chan could really step up in this game and sort of showcase in front of the German fucking Show that he's not watching. really a right-back. Yeah. Show that he's not a right-back, yeah, that's a good thing. And, and sort of look to take control of the game. So that, for me, is Emre Chan. Yeah, I'm going to go with Coutinho because, you know, we always... We are, we carry this fear with Phil Coutinho that is he going to prove himself and, and and do this and that. But one thing we know about him now, and I think he's done it enough over the last three seasons to say he steps up in the biggest games yeah, for Liverpool. And um, you know he's in a he's in a good run of form at the moment. And if we can get if we can get Firmino on the pitch, and if we can maybe with a storage or whatever, if that's the way we we go for it, I think it gives him loads more room to operate. I think you looked at what he was doing against Spurs. Looking to play Sturridge in with three balls. He's actually looking to play give and goes and get into the box. He's just getting better and better and better. And what a, what a stage for him to go out there and show, show his quality. So, yeah, absolutely him. For, and I, I'll be honest with Dortmund, take your pick. <laughs> Mkhitaryan, I think, you know, if, we, if he plays and we can, if we can, if we can cut him off, um, we'll have a much easier time of doing things, whether it's possible to do it, given how much quality they've got. I don't know, but uh, let us know your thoughts. Actually, who you think from Dortmund is going to be the key. But again, pick, pick one of the 11. Um, score predictions, Dad, what do you think? I'm going to stick with that 2-1 defeat. Is that the first time we've predicted No, it's defeats? not. I think we've had them on your, in Europe before. I think so. Um, not from me or you, and, and hence... Mm. Uh, probably deluded one or draw. Okay, sound. Well, you know what? Three one to Liverpool. Yes, Paul. <laughs> Let's channel Labour Cues and I told you. I want, yes, Paul. I, I want someone to bend a couple of free. Jesus Christ! I want someone to bend a couple of free kicks in out the blue. Deja Lovren or something. I don't know. You know. Um, yeah. But we well, going to sign Payet before the game, yeah, then. Yeah. <laughs> someone just someone just pulls it out, and I, you know, someone dies, get a penalty. We might actually him. score from a corner. Yeah, why not? Look, you know, and the fact of the matter is, Dortmund are a much, a much better. Look, they're the better side in better in better form with better players. We've got a better manager. Probably got a better manager who knows their team inside and out. Um, and it's Europe and it's Liverpool, and you know, you, you know, if we made a habit of saying that Liverpool were going to lose games that they were expected to lose. We would have had so much less joy and success over the last 15, 20 years. That just think win. how happy I'm going to be when we win. Well, exactly. There you go. So it's, I'm going. I'm going. I'm, I'm choosing. I'm choosing happiness again. We we'll do um, the trivia on time. We can do the trivia. I'll do answer. the question first. Just do the just the just the, 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 the actual, actual question, question. <laughs> not, not not the padding out and the biff. What four players have played for both teams? The only way I could tell you that would be by naming every German I could remember who played for us. Go for it. So Shaheen, I know. Yeah. Because obviously One. he's still there. Yeah. Um, Riedler, yeah, Ziga, yeah. no, mm, that's it. Ham, what's Haman? No, um, I give you give you a clue. Full back. What's do the two name? are not? Do the two are not Germans? They're not Germans. No, nope. what's going on? One of them's a Czech. Whatever happened to purity Swiss. in the Deutschland? <laughs> <laughs> um, no idea. Oh, so we got Philip Dagen. Oh, Philip Dagen. Well, I don't class him as a footballer. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah, maybe I should have rewrote the question. Uh, and Patrick Berger. Oh, Patrick And Berger. for yeah. the, Of those four, who are the only two to transfer directly? It's definitely Riedle. And is it Sahin? Patrick no? Berger. Patrick Berger was one. Okay. Patrick Berger, yeah, I remember, I remember now that he was returning. For one bonus point, who played in both games against Liverpool in 2001 in the Champions League? Group no. and he's still playing in the Premier League today. No idea. Absolutely no idea. Thomas Rosicki. Ah, um, that is a well done. That's brilliant. That's there you one, go. If you got Thomas Rosicki, give yourself not a play, massive. Not playing very that. often in the Premier League. No, <laughs> no, technically well, playing is. I think is actually, a club in the I'm, I'm not League. sure he's played in the Premier League this season. I, I know he played. Did Arsenal play Burnley in the FA Cup or something? I know he came back from injury against them, but uh, yeah, came back from injury. It's the, it's how, him, him and Jack Wilshere. The, the, the back, the back in training. Yeah, and then out again. Never mind. Um, there you go. If you did that, if you got that right, good on you. Thanks very much. Score predictions and all that in the comments below. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Ta-da.
Welcome back to Retro Football TV, crossing over the Red Men TV. It's the TM0102 Transfer Scout Show. It's episode five, which means in the challenge show. It's also episode five. This